Hi all, this is Karthik from Design School for WordPress Beginners, the place where I teach you how to design, build and customize your website. If you are new here, consider subscribing. Let's get into the video. In this video, I am going to share 10 hidden features or tiny details that you may have missed in Elementor. Well, this happens to all of us and gladly I am here to share those 10 hidden features. You may have known some of these but keep watching, stay tuned. Coming in at number 1 is the right click. We all know that Elementor has right click that gives us contextual options based on what we right click on. But it works differently in two different situations. When you have the side pane on and when it's not minimized, you can simply right click to get all the contextual Elementor options. But when you minimize the side pane and you right click, you get the standard browser options. This is really handy to inspect class names while you're still in the Elementor editing interface so that you can target that particular class just by using CSS so you don't have to leave the Elementor editing interface to find out the class name so that's really neat and just bring this preview pane back and you can right click to get contextual options so it's that easy to switch between right click options of Elementor and your browser coming in at number two is right click to edit well you can right click to edit any section, column or a widget. Well if you want to do that you can simply click on the icon. So if you click on this book icon you can get the settings for all the column and if you click on this dots button you get the settings for your section and when you click on your widget you get all the options for your widget. Well you can simply right click to edit any particular section, column or a widget. But how do you know that you're right clicking on that particular section, column or a widget? Well it's simple. If you hover over something and if it's highlighted in blue and when you see the pencil icon it means that you're actually going to right click on the widget itself so when you right click you get the contextual option for that widget so when i click on that i get contextual option for the widget when you move out of the boundaries of the widget and when you have a dotted border selected and when you right click you're actually right clicking on the column so when you right click you get the right clicking column options and the same applies to the section when you move out of the boundaries of the column and when you see a blue outline you're right clicking a section so you can right click to edit section you don't have to click on the section or click on this particular icon and the best thing about this is that you don't even have to go onto the top of the section column or a widget to click on that so here i have my column and you can see it's highlighted in dotted border so when i right click i'm right clicking so when i right click i'm actually right clicking on the column and when i move out of the boundaries of the column i can see a blue outline and when i right click i'm actually editing the section so it's really handy so if you have a large section or a large column it's really handy to right click and predict what it's going to be in the contextual menu coming in at number three is custom css at page level when you add custom CSS under the advanced column of a section, column or a widget, well, you're basically adding CSS at a page level. And that's the reason why we use selector so that we limit the CSS added under custom CSS area to just that particular section, column or a widget that we're adding CSS to. So if I add something like this, so if I say color, you can see all H2 tags change their color so here there's another h2 tag and let me remove this let me put that again so i just added custom css under this section but it's actually affecting the properties of other h2 or heading widgets in other section so basically the css that you add in custom css area of anything on a page is actually added at a page level so it affects all the elements under page level so if you want to limit css to that particular element that you're adding you need to add selector or you can simply give it a class name and replace selector with dot class name and that's the reason why we use selector all the time again this is another feature that you may not know at first glance if you really don't like the idea of adding css at each section column or widget well you can do that at page level directly so you can give each element a class name under advanced and you can target all those elements at page level so you click on the settings cog and it opens up page settings if you go to style under advanced you have option to add custom css so you can simply put the page level custom css here so you can add dot class name and then all the styles that you want to apply for that particular element so all your css can go under here and it's easily accessible by clicking the settings cog under advanced tab so that's one feature hidden in elementor coming in at number five is page background well, you can set a page level background so that you don't have to set background for each individual section, column or a widget. So just click on the settings cog again 
Under style, you have the option to set background. So you can pick a color. Well, you cannot see anything because the section already has background. So let me clear out the background that the section has. So if I click on delete, you can clearly see the background that I set for the whole page. So it's this color. If I change the color, you can see that being reflected there. So it's available throughout the page. The page level background, you can set a page level background. It need not be a color. It can be a gradient as well. So if you want to set a gradient, it's that easy. Coming in at number six are page level image backgrounds. Well, these are really cool and they're really handy in two particular cases. So I'll show you two instances where they're handy. So you click on the settings cog when you're designing a page, go to style. Here you can add an image and let's pick an image. So I'll just pick this. Now when you add an image to your page, you may think, well, it's not what I'm looking for. But if you change few of these settings, they can do a lot of cool things. So for instance, if I change this to fixed and if I change the position to something else, you'll see the same background throughout the page. So basically the image stays fixed and it's as if you're scrolling all your sections and column over it. So it creates that neat little parallax effect. If you have a fairly larger amount of image, you can also set it to scroll and your image scrolls with the page and you can also set the image to repeat. But what makes this really cool is that you're just loading this image just once at page level. So one image for the whole page and if this image size is maybe around 100 KB, that's really optimizing your page. Well, you can use solid backgrounds or gradient backgrounds for the rest of the sections or other elements in your page. and by doing so, you're not putting much load on your server and your page loads really fast. And this is particularly helpful if your image is not an image like this and if it's a pattern. So here I have a pattern. I'll just select my pattern. I'll click on it. So cool about this is that you can set repeat. So if I set the pattern to repeat, it repeats along X and Y direction. But if I just want it to repeat along X direction, I can choose that. I can make it repeat across Y, across X, and you can do all sorts of stuff. So I can also change the size from cover to contain to get various backgrounds. I changed the size to contain and I made it repeat. And let's change the attachment to fixed and watch what happens. As I scroll through, it's as if I'm scrolling through this pattern. Let's clear out the background of this section so you can see the image clearly. I'll just remove the color from this section and you can see that it's as if we're scrolling through that particular image. It's really helpful and it provides that neat little parallax effect. And you can just upload a pattern of maybe around 80 KB and you can make it repeat using these settings. So you're effectively using a 80 KB image as your background for the whole page so it puts minimum load on your server and that's really a great way to optimize your page for speed. I have a bigger pattern here. If you have a pattern, maybe a smaller pattern, you can make it repeat across X and Y and it occupies the whole page. You can change these settings and it occupies the amount of space on the whole page and that's really handy. So this is another cool feature hidden under Elementor settings. So coming in at number seven is column adjustment. So sometimes when you have a lot of columns within a section or an intersection and you're trying to enter a value for column width, it may not work as expected. Well, what do you do then? You don't have to type anything here. You just click on the slider and drag the value. So it will tell you the maximum possible value that you can drag this column to. So this column cannot go beyond 64.6%. So that's because the other content need at least 30% space to accommodate all the contents within the columns. So if you want to see the maximum possible width that a particular column can stretch to, simply click and drag the slider and it won't go beyond a point and that's the maximum possible width. So coming in at number eight is the inline text editing. So whenever you have a piece of text, it can be a heading widget, it can be a text editor widget. You can simply click and edit the text inline so I can say something like this without even going to the right preview pane. Well, it's also true for anything that contains text. So here I have a price 
list widget, price table widget. So I can simply click on this text and edit it. Just like that. So it's inline text editing is possible with any text widget or any widget that contains text in it. It's also possible with the icon box widget. So you can simply go in here and type in a text. So I can say edit text here, just like that and it works out of the box. Coming in at number 9 is to reset the style with right click. So you can have any section, column or widget and you can adjust the styles under the style tab. So this is basically setting all the CSS properties such as background, border, shape divider and all this. But what if you quickly want to erase all these properties? Well it's simple, just right click and click on reset style and it will remove all the properties set under this particular section. So it need not be the ones that you are actually working on. So if you download a template and if you click on reset, it will remove all the properties that you have set under style tab or the properties that are set under style tab. It's equally true for any section, column or widget. So if you want to quickly reset everything to the default, just cl right click on that and click on reset style and you can start from the scratch. Last but certainly not least is the irresistible wing. Well this is not a feature but it's a tiny little touch that Elementor added because every detail matters. So when you go to an empty place like this or when you didn't create any template you'll see that smiley smiling at you and when you hover over it it winks. See that? It's really cool and it's also available within your template section. You can click on templates and at the end of your templates you have this smiley that will wink at you if you hover over it. Well I just really like that Elementor paid attention to even the tiniest details and it really matters to me. It doesn't exactly affect the experience as a whole but you know it just adds up to the list of all the little things. That's it for now. Hope you guys like this. I'll talk to you in the next video.